Urban lofts have a built-in style. Cement pillars, timber beams, and vaulted ceilings create an immediate connection to a building's history and rhythm of the city. For our friend Susan, her loft is an extension of her funky aesthetic taste. I'm Martin Amato, it's another Saturday morning, and we're gonna see if we can push that funky fashion just a little further and give Susan's kitchen a brand new look to match her style. On this edition of Saturday DIY, Moen Makeovers. Susan, at first glance, I must say, this looks like a pretty nice kitchen. Thank you. What don't you like about it? Um, I don't feel that this kitchen fits with the vibe of the rest of my unit. Let's begin with the sink. Ah, the sink. Um, it's a bit of an eyesore, huh? <laughs> it's a bit of an eyesore. Talk to me about the faucet right here. The faucet. The faucet um, with my lovely purifier yeah. on top is um, really an old faucet that the developers had put in. It's a basic model faucet. Mm -hmm. Let's also talk about the empty space on top of the cabinets. I have a lot of empty space. Yeah. We totally need to fill that up. Well, listen, your kitchen looks nice, but I think it could look much better. Yes. And that's it, the whole reason we're here. Yes, that's why you're here, because it needs a little bit of help. So Susan, there's many things that you can do to give your kitchen more personality, kind of spice it up a little bit, and also embrace and capture that funky, edgy vibe you have going on in your loft. Excellent. So you ready to begin? I'm ready. Beautiful open loft here, but I know your bathroom space just doesn't flow with the rest of your home, huh? Yeah, the main living area is much more modern and the bathrooms are sort of stuck in the last decade, I would say. <laughs> but we're gonna change that for you today, I promise you. Here we have some of the accessories and the products that will help us do that. Great. Let's begin first with your sink. This is a new vessel sink. It looks very cool, very contemporary in your bathroom space. And then this is gonna sit on top of a butcher block. Can you believe that? Uh, no, I don't think I've ever seen that in a bathroom. Well, you know what, typically you actually use it in a kitchen space, yeah. but in this case, we're using it in the bathroom. But as long as you seal it with like polyurethane, you're good to go. So let's move on now to the fixtures. Okay. We're gonna replace your existing shower head with Moen's Envy Eco Performance Shower Head. Moving on to the faucet, here we have the icon line. Not only do they have the faucet, but they also have the matching accessories. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's very modern. It just looks like a piece of sculpture. This is a single handle faucet you can see right here. Mm -hmm. Now this is gonna go with your vessel sink. So all the accessories are gonna match, all the finishes. So for that spa feeling, right. white towels, also a waffle weave shower curtain, and it's gonna coordinate perfectly with the new paint color. But now it's time to actually get our hands dirty okay. and begin the work, okay? So large strokes, Got it. overlapping, so we don't have a line. Good job, I'm gonna have to hire you. <laughs> I'm available. <laughs> okay, Nicole, so we already turned off the water supply underneath the cabinet, and the first installation tip is to go ahead and bleed the lines. Let's bleed the lines. Very good question. That just means we turn on the faucet and let the water run out. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And then we can start disassembling it. All right, Nicole, so we're installing a towel bar here for you. Moen actually includes a template and typically it requires the installation of two brackets. I already marked the center of the 18 inch towel bar. Okay. I just need you to put the level here for me on this line. Okay. So all we need to do now is basically puncture the holes right here where the brackets are gonna go. This side and this side. And then we just drill the holes, install the brackets, put up the towel bar and it'll be completely straight. You have a place for everything and everything in its place. Traveling can be stressful on its own, but by installing timer-activated lighting, you can alleviate some of the worry by giving your home the appearance you're still there. A plug-in timer for a table lamp can create the illusion of an occupied home and keep would-be intruders away. A standard wall switch can also be replaced with an in-wall digital timer that will turn interior or exterior lighting off at predetermined times or at random intervals based on your preference. Timers are an inexpensive way to provide extra security and safety and keep the electric bill down. Need more expert advice? Stop by your local True Value hardware store and ask a hardwarian. True Value. Start right. Start here.
Waterfalls are pretty, but not when they're flowing down the side of your house. Clogged gutters can cause serious damage to roof areas as well as your home's foundation. Here's what you need to keep them clean, clear, and working properly. A ladder, work gloves, lawn bags or plastic garbage bags, a gutter scoop or trowel, a handled scrub brush, and a garden hose. First, make sure your ladder is resting on solid ground. Heavy gloves are a must. Sharp sticks, thorns, or branches can cut your fingers and hands. Now, if you don't want to scoop out leaves and debris by hand, use a tool like this. If you want more reach, opt for a long-handled gutter scoop. Toss the debris down onto the lawn below. Cover the ground with a tarp for easier cleanup. Once you've cleared out all the obstructions, Use a scrub brush to clean away slime or mossy buildup. The last step is to rinse. Turn on your garden hose and run water from one end to the other. Don't forget to go back and bag the leaves and debris on your lawn. Also, be sure to trim back tree branches that hang over your house to prevent excessive buildup in the gutters below. Now you're good to go. Cleaning your gutters twice a year in the spring and fall ensures they work properly to help protect your home from water overflow and seepage. Need more expert advice? Stop by your local True Value hardware store and ask a hardwarian. True Value. Start right. Start here. A good paintbrush is an investment. Protect yours by following a few simple cleanup tips. Here are the supplies you'll need for the job. A wire brush or paintbrush comb, stir stick, paint thinner, three glass jars or containers, some clean rags, plastic bags, and a rubber band. If you use latex paint, rinse under running water. It helps to gently squeeze bristles with your hand or dab on the bottom of the sink until the water runs clean. A wire brush or paintbrush comb is also a helpful tool for cleaning bristles as you rinse. If you used oil-based paint, water won't do the job. You need to clean brushes and rollers with a solvent such as paint thinner. To avoid waste and environmental harm, I suggest you follow this three container approach. Partially fill three glass jars with thinner. Rinse out most of the paint in the first one. Wipe the brush with a disposable cloth or newspaper, then move to the second container and repeat the process. By the time you've immersed the paint bristles in all three, it should be pretty clean. When you're done, pour the contents of all three jars into one and label it as used thinner. Once the paint has settled out and the thinner's clear, you can reuse it. When you're done cleaning, you can help brushes keep their shape by drying bristles with a clean rag and then wrap them tightly in plastic wrap or a piece of brown paper. Secure that with a rubber band. For storage, just hang them up. And remember, if you want to start with a good clean brush, you got to end with one too. Need more expert advice? Stop by your local True Value hardware store and ask a hardwarian. True Value. Start right. Start here. Masking is the key to sharp professional paint lines and an overall neat finished look. And it comes in different widths for all kinds of applications. First, clean the surface and make sure it is dry and dust free. This will help the tape stick properly. Secure the tape a few feet at a time by pressing the edge down with a putty knife. If necessary, seal the edge of the tape with the existing base color of the wall. Once the paint has dried, remove at a 45 degree angle and at a moderate speed. If adhesive sticks to the surface, try a 90 degree angle. If paint is pulling up with the tape, try scoring the edge with a razor blade before pulling further. Need more expert advice? Stop by your local True Value hardware store and ask a hardwarian. True Value. Start right. Start here. Dimmer switches add flexibility to existing lighting. They also help you save energy and money and make your light bulbs last longer. There are several different kinds of dimmers, but today I'll be showing you how to install a three-way switch. Here's what you'll need. A dimmer switch and switch plate, standard screws, a screwdriver, a wire stripper, wire nuts as needed, and some electrical tape. 
Before you begin, turn off the power to the circuit you're working on at your home's main electrical panel. Then unscrew the cover plate at the old switch and carefully pull the switch out of the box. Cut the wall wires from the existing light switch. On a three-way switch, one of the wires will be connected under a different color screw or will be plugged into a hole in the rear of the switch labeled common. Tag this wire with a piece of electrical tape. Use a wire stripper to strip off 3 eighths of an inch of insulation from all wires. Install the green wire, then install the common or white wire, then install the black and red wire. Push the switch back into place, tighten the two screws that hold it in position, then install the new dimmer switch plate over the switch. Return power to the circuit and test the dimmer to make sure your installation was correctly done. And that's it. Need more expert advice? Stop by your local True Value hardware store and ask a hardwarian. True Value. Start right. Start here. Thank you for your interest in the Craftsman Visor or Compact Remote. This video will walk you step by step through the simple process of programming your new Craftsman Remote. This video applies only to Craftsman branded garage door openers manufactured after January 1st, 1993, or openers that have smart or learn buttons that are green, red, orange, purple, or yellow. This video will show you how to program these models. To begin, you need to set up your system for programming. You can do this in two steps. Prior to programming, make sure you start with your garage door closed. On your garage door opener, locate the smart button, or on some models, the learn button. If you have the visor remote, look for the program button on the back of your remote. If you have the compact remote, look for the program button on the side of your remote.